Ladies and gentlemen, there may be an evil among us, a sinister presence that may have been with man since his inception, a darkness, cold, calculating, deceitful. Now this evil comes in the form of an otherworldly entity, a race of beings that are physically humanoid but perhaps extra-dimensional or extraterrestrial in origin. There are two things that are very significant about these beings. One, they are believed to have at some point mixed their genetics with ours, leaving a few living descendants still here among us. Two, they are described as being reptilian in appearance. Yes, the reptilians, one of the most notoriously malevolent races of alien beings to have ever existed. Is this all purely science fiction? Or is it hidden truth that our ancient ancestors all tried to warn us about? Maybe this is about more than shape-shifting creatures. Maybe it's really about shape-shifting the truth. I'm not saying that there aren't some human beings here that definitely don't have some serious problems. I'm not saying that at all. There are some who do. But the bottom line is, when you, when you look at the whole picture and you go up the ladder, Okay, we are not the enemy. The enemy isn't human at all. But it's pushing all our buttons so that we're so busy looking at each other and so, so um, uh, neurotic about each other mm. that we're not looking at the real, the real reality here, the real cause, which is another race or races that are here who are totally playing games with us, feeding off our energy, and hoping that we destroy ourselves so that they can keep the planet. And themselves. really, let's let's say who it is again. It's the Orion Group. It's the Orion Group. It's a group that is on its way here now from Alpha Draconis. They're the real culprits behind this whole deal. Um, Alpha and, Draconis and or Orion or both those. Alpha two. Draconis. They're the real culprits behind this whole thing. Above the Orion. Above the Orion Group. Yes. Okay. Yes. So then there's Orion. Be? Then there's Orion. The Orion Group. Then you've got uh, the Grays. So, there are several stories behind the origins of the reptilians. Before we get into that, understand that the existence of extraterrestrials or whatever you want to call them, we do not know everything just from what was left behind. Artifacts, ancient texts, ancient structures, historical figures, fossils. In other words, what we have found leaves things open for speculation. So when you're listening to someone discuss these subject matters, myself included, anyone discussing reptilians, there are really two types. Those who are not sure and those who are so sure that they express this as if what they are saying is in fact a fact. How many times have you heard someone, a well-known author, theorist, journalist, whistleblower, researcher, discuss aliens as if they lived with them for 50 years? Some of these people seem to know too much. But at the end of the day, it does not matter because you will ultimately make up your own mind as to what is the truth. With all that said, this is the Draco star system, the dragon. Yes, I know this is going to sound like I'm talking about a comic book, but I'm going to try my best to stick to the basics. And this is an actual star system which for many of you is already understood. It is the eighth largest constellation and can be seen in the northern sky all year. The reason it is called the dragon is because the constellation is entangled in the stars like a slithering snake or serpent. It has 14 main stars, which of course have varied distances from Earth ranging within 70 to 400 light years from Earth, which is a fairly close star system. It is also an area in the sky where you could see the Cat's Eye Nebula, the Spindle Galaxy, the Draco Dwarf Galaxy, and several other celestial bodies. Now I'm going to tell you the story. Pay attention because it is going to resemble other stories that you have heard before. I don't want to get into all the different races of aliens, but apparently there are many, many races of aliens, and these races seem to have a structured hierarchy very similar to what we already are familiar with. 
They have founders and councils, a royal class, a warrior class, a working class. Now, as the universe was being created, before Earth was created, there existed amongst other alien races, the Carrions. Yes, it is exactly what you think. Bird people. And if you think that's bizarre, the parent race to the Carrions is the feline race. Of course. The home of the Carrions is the Orion constellation. There goes that name again. So these beings were etheric in nature, but needed to take physical form in order to live on one of the paradise planets in Orion. They chose the form that today we call a bird, but not all of them. Some of the Carrions chose to remain what they were. Now these Carrions who descended to the planet learned a little trick from the felines. Genetic manipulation of species. Are you with me so far? They mingled their genetics with the genetics of the reptile species that was living on the planet at that time, giving birth to the humanoid dinosaur super monster, the Alpha Draconian. Well, folks, I guess that answers our questions about dinosaurs. So this Alpha Draconian race is described as being a very monstrous type being, 18 to 25 feet tall about 15 to 1800 pounds the head of a dinosaur the body of a man with claws wings and a tail they have two hearts and a very large liver they can live up to anywhere in the neighborhood of 1000 to 4000 years fast extremely intelligent extremely psychic and extremely dangerous now, thanks to the carrions, we have this abomination of a species. And I'm sure as intelligent beings, the Alpha Draconians were well aware of what they were. I could see how they would see themselves as monsters compared to their creators. I could see how that would bring the inner monster out of any intelligent humanoid life form. It would also cause one to feel a sense of superiority over other races because they can't really stand being the monsters that they are. So what happened was, the Carrions left the Draconians, and the Draconians were left to start taking over and conquering worlds, using the knowledge and technology gained from the Carrions. The Draconians then went on to create other reptilian and non-reptilian races, for example the Greys. And these Draconians are responsible for the shape-shifting, government-manipulating, blue-blooded, underground dwelling child and negative energy eating race that is suspected to be living among us today now of course that is just the short version of the story but you get the picture and you have probably heard that story before it's in Genesis in fact the biblical scriptures has many references to monsters and dragons lions the ancient Egyptians the ancient Greeks serpents Ancient Sumer, serpents, and India, serpents, dragons, China, dragons everywhere, ancient Native Americans. This is one big planet of dragon worshippers. I'm not kidding. Now what I find interesting about the Draconians is that we do indeed have fossils of dinosaurs, right? Look at the T-Rex. What is that? Looks like a freaking dragon to me. No, it's a dinosaur. It's an animal. Okay, there are dangerous, large, predatory animals. Crocodiles, large cats, bears, sharks. Those are animals. This is a monster. How intelligent do you think a creature like that would be? What if they were not just dumb animals? I mean, you have to ask yourself, aside from animals that we know exist today, these dinosaurs are strange. There is something not quite right about some of their species. They don't seem to fit quite right in this world. Maybe it is not that reptiles came from dinosaurs, but maybe dinosaurs came from reptiles? So what we may have among us today are several species or races of humanoid reptilians and their descendants in human form. For example, some theorize that the 
The Serta reptile is the ancestor to many of the reptilian races born here. Some only carry the blood, others can shapeshift. Some live underground, some are amphibious, which is a reference to mermaids and mermen. And the reptilian agenda is of course domination and dominion, control of the masses. These beings not only believe that they are better than us, they believe that they are rightfully the owners of this planet. And we are nothing but food, cattle. Now when you go to research reptilians, you will find an entire library on the subject. Not just a few books, but endless texts about the subject that go back as far as recorded history. And whether we believe reptilians exist or not, that representation of serpent people, the dragon, is a part of our history and culture. And it does affect our lives, as we often don't realize exactly what it is we are doing. How many people you think died in the name of some reptilian god? Or do you think they were chopping people's heads off every day at those pyramids in Central America? I mean, the serpent is a medical symbol for goodness sakes. Who came up with that bright idea? And we still use that symbolism almost religiously. Why? This is representing the path up to God through serpents. We have ritualistic shaman dancing with snakes. I don't know why people like dancing with snakes. It is strange. Better yet, look at East Asia. The dragon is heavy in their culture. I mean, deeply embedded. They name food after it. And we love it. We do. Now, why is it that we enjoy watching children with dragons? The never-ending story, Pete's dragon, how to train a dragon. You get the picture. I'm sure you could name a few yourself. So the idolatry of serpents is definitely all around us. The serpent has slithered its way into almost every mythological or religious narrative there is. Why? Many of us, in fact, believe it was a serpent that started all our problems today. I would say that there is something to this reptilian matter, but what is it? I gather most of you should have a basic understanding of fallen angels and how they descended to earth and mingled their seed with that of humans and animals, or something of that nature. And today the fallen angels are working behind the scenes to further their agenda. So wait a minute. Are they working with the reptilians like some idiot human would? Do they even get along? I don't think there is enough room for the both of them. Folks, you can't tell me there are evil reptile aliens and demons. That's too crazy. You can't have both. So I am just going to assume that these reptilians and what people have been seeing and what people have been contacting are all the same type of beings. Demons, fallen angels, all the same. The only difference is that these reptilians are supposed to be solid, non-etherical, physical, three-dimensional beings that are stuck looking like reptiles. But don't evil spirits have the ability to take any desired form? I mean, the way people described shape-shifting reptiles sounds like some kind of possession. Go to any researcher or author on the subject of reptilians and you know some names. And look at how certain they are, how comfortable and confident they are discussing the subject. Look at their similar sense of humor. They all know a lot about reptilians, but their stories are somewhat different. I have just spent days trying to find some concrete consistencies within their stories. There are some, but there are many variations, which brings up the issue with people going as far to disclose with an unprepared audience that they have received a great portion of their information from other aliens. Yes, the Andromeda Council of the Galactic Federation selected me to speak on their behalf, to tell mankind about the one million year war with the Draconians in the Orion star system, and to warn everyone about the reptilians on this planet. They're bad dudes.